Hello and welcome to our review of Nick Software's Define 2.0, their noise reduction uh, software program, which is actually I'm pretty impressed with this thing. I have it installed as a plug-in, so I opened up Photoshop, opened up the image, and then found um, Define 2.0. Now, I've given it a really, really horrible uh, image to work with. This was shot at an ISO of 1600. Uh, it's 72 ppi and it's got just about everything you don't want in an image that's pretty much guaranteed to be noisy at that high of an ISO anyway. We have up here very dark areas of shadow here, very dark areas uh, in the slate floor. We have um, the texture, the very dark texture in the couch and um, we also have specular highlights over here. We have a black glass table with reflections and specular highlights, a lot of colors. And lastly, we have human beings. We have faces, which are real important to work on with the noise, and also really fine details in leg hair. So, as you can see, um, it's got just about everything you don't want, as I say. Uh, my general philosophy in testing programs like this is give it the most impossible image you possibly can and let's see what breaks first. Um, now if you take a look down here in the loop view, you can see your before and after and as I go through some of these parts again, you can see at the default settings it's already done a really good job. I might want to work on that area a little bit more, the slate floor. But when it comes up to the faces, you can see all the noise in the faces. And then as I sweep across, you can see how much it's cleaning those up on the boy and also the girls. The before and the after, really, really good. Uh, specular highlights, let's take a look at that. The before and the after, I see no halos and I see no color changes, which, which can happen. I've seen this in some noise reduction software programs, and the specular highlights, that is usually what I find breaks first. Okay, let's get to it. Let's take a look at the interface. We have our three different viewing modes, uh, full screen after. We have split screen, which is very nice because you can grab the red line and sweep across the entire image to see a before and after. You have a before and after top to bottom. Let's go back to the full screen here. Now you also have different viewing modes here. We're going to be taking a look at these uh, in just a little bit. There's your full RG RGB image. You can look at it per channel. Uh, that's really interesting because noise really loves to live in the blue channel. So that's a good one to look at. But we're going to be looking at these two masks here in just a bit. Okay. Then you've got your usual suspects over here, your select tool for working with the control points, hand tool for grabbing and moving around, magnify, and change the background color. Okay, here's where you're going to start. Uh, the method is on automatic. You can choose manual also, but I actually don't really recommend that. Do it if you want, and then it's all up to you, every part of the image, to get it right. The automatic, I find the default settings do really a wonderful job. It's already measured the noise, so you don't have to click that again. So just click Reduce. Now we start getting our uh, finer adjustment tools. Uh, we're going to look at two kinds of color, uh, uh, two kinds of noise here. Contrast noise, those are the little uh, black and white and grayish kind of specks you'll see, especially in the shadow areas. And color noise, which are also specks, but they'll show up as color. Um, most of the problem I have with noise is in contrast noise. I, I rarely actually ever get color noise. You might get it occasionally. Now, here's what I'm going to do. I'm going to come down and look at the loop view. This image is quite large, and if I expanded this up to 100% or more, um, it's a real pain in the butt to move around the navigator and see the whole image easily. I like it better with this view. Uh, then I can just sweep my cursor over the image and see the 100% down here in the loop view wherever I want. Now, what I want to do is look at one of the worst areas, which is right up here on the staircase, a uh, very kind of dark area. I want to see how it does over here, but I want to fix the loop view. So click the uh, push pin, 
come over to a real, real bad area like this, click it, and it'll freeze in place. Now, what I usually do in my workflow is I'll bring the contrast noise all the way up to maximum 200%, and then I'll take a look down here and see. And now what I want to do is slowly drag down the contrast noise setting until I'm getting just the barest hint of noise. I see it coming in now. So I'm going to uh, take a little bit more time when I'm doing this for real. But for now, I'm going to set that at about 153% uh, just before I get the noise coming in. Unpin it. And take a look at some other regions down here on the floor. Good. I like it. The texture region on the back of the couch is really important. Specular highlights, still looking very good. The tabletop and the faces. Now I might want to go around and, and play a little bit more because faces are really important in this image. Come back, pin it on a face, half and half, and it freezes the view. Play with the contrast noise again. Can I bring this down any more. I was at 153. I kind of can. I'm down to like 130 now. I'm down to starting to get noise at 107%. So again, I'll go through this process over and over in different parts of the image, pinning and freezing the loop view, pulling down and up the contrast noise, color noise if I have it over and over again. Let's go ahead and leave it at 131%. Uh, for now, when you do your real work, you'll, you'll do the real fine-tuning kind of stuff. Okay, so these are my method uh, setting right now is at control points. So I have two buttons here to choose from to drop a uh, control point. If you choose the left one that has the minus on it, all your settings for your contrast noise and color noise are automatically set to zero. No removal or maximum removal. Let's just try this. Whatever. Click on that. Let's come back up in here. And just for demo purposes only, let's click right there. There it is. And we've got these guys set. Uh, contrast noise and our color noise. Now we can uh, change the size of the area. This is really important. Uh, you can see the size that we're going to affect coming down and down. Well, that should about cover it, right? You have to be really careful with this setting because it may expand out and usually does much more than you're planning on. So after a control point is dropped, come up here. I want to look at the contrast noise mask. And now I see the mask. And now it's much easier for me to adjust the size that that's going to affect. I can see that much better. If I want to do maximum contrast noise removal at 200%, it'll turn real, real white. If I want to do absolutely no adjustment, whatever, it turns black. Just for our purposes, let me just ramp this up so you can see it. OK. Now I can get a much better idea of where I'm hitting. Good. Let's go back to the RGB. And we've got that one. Now, now let's say I kind of like what was happening over here, and I want to bring it down onto the floor also. Uh, just simply hold down the Alt key or the Option key on a Mac and click on your little Move guy right here. You'll see that plus sign come up. Click and move it. And the adjustments will automatically come in down there as well. Back in the panel, you do have a button for duplicate, but you don't have to do that. The keyboard shortcut of the Alt key or the Option key on a Mac is actually much better. So now you can choose to add as many control points as you want. Uh, I've dropped two here. Take a look at the contrast noise mask again. That looks pretty good, I guess. Do be careful with that. Always check out that mask to make sure that you're affecting only the area you really want to affect. OK, so that's one, control points. Now you have another way to reduce the noise also, and that would be in color ranges. So you press that. And this could be really, really effective for, say, shots where you've got a lot of that uh, sort of uniform texture blue sky, and that's looking noisy then all you have to do really is 
one of a couple of different things. You can click on the color swatch and you could choose a color for reducing the noise or you could click on the eyedropper, come into the image, click on say the stairs which we're seeing, which was seeing a lot of noise and the floor, click on the eyedropper, click there to get that one, the back of the couch, click on that one and you can add as many as you want of these and obviously remove them. Once you've selected your colors, now you can come back and ramp up your uh, sliders for the contrast noise or the color noise. And you have more options down here, but no noise uh, removal program uh, would be worth it, worth the money without something like this, edge preservation. You have to go back and work on the edges again, always. Um, now, what I'm going to do, I'm in loop view. I'm going to come down to a real edge area on the leg here. I want to pin this right on here. And in fact, I changed my mind. I want to look at this area, it's not only an edge, but it's a fine detail of the leg hair. And this is just really, really difficult for any noise removal program to work on, is to simultaneously reduce noise, which will cause a little blurring in your image, and maintain excruciatingly fine detail. So you've got an option here, edge preservation. Let's pull that all the way up there. See a little bit, but not much. Most importantly, let's look at the faces because again, this image having faces, I'm going to pin the face before and after. And then I want to turn off edge preservation and then turn it back on again. And I'm seeing a little bit of stuff I'm not sure I like right around the eyes and the mouth. So what I might do is pull that down again. The faces, if you have any faces in your image, those are always the most important. So I might pull that down. I want to get some edge sharpness maintained, but I don't want to screw up the face. Edge preservation on and off again. I'm still seeing a little bit around the eyes. I, I don't know. I might want to pull that down even more. Play with that a little bit more. That's not bad. Okay. I've got a little bit of edge preservation, a little bit of sharpness on the edges there, and I'm not messing up the faces. If you see you've got JPEG artifact uh, in your image, click that one on. And also sometimes in, in really truly horrible noisy images you get these, uh, these kind of thick bands of noise that go across your image horizontally or vertically. That's the way to get rid of that stuff. So yeah, that's the rundown on pretty much everything you've got going for you in this program. Truly an outstanding program. Um, I really love it. I love everything about uh, Nick Software's control points, which are just so good. Um, it gives me selective control. So that's about it for uh, Nick Software's Define 2.0, but not quite yet. Come down and press the brush button, and it will jump you back to Photoshop. You'll get a little panel where you've got more options down here. The noise removal will jump up on a new layer and it will automatically generate a layer mask filled with black. So what that means is you can't see any of the noise reduction at all. Try this one. Click paint. There you go. Now you have the black layer mask. That means you've revealed all the unadjusted pixels underneath. Now you can come over, choose a brush, get white, and then you can come back and paint in your image and paint the noise reduction effect back in. Now, Define is really, really an excellent program. And after working with it, I've, I've got the image pretty much where I want it. So I, I don't want to start from nothing and paint the effect back in. I want to start from everything, and if I want to, paint the effect out. Click fill, you get white. Same thing with erase. Now set black as your foreground color uh, with your uh, brush, so brush tool selected. Now you can just go in and selectively and gradually remove the effect. 
you can set the opacity of your brush way down so you really, really slowly and excruciatingly gradually bring it back in. Uh, and this is the final kicker on uh, Define 2.0 is this extra option at the very end of being really, really, really selective in what you want to maintain and what you want to get rid of and to what extent. Love the program. Uh, highly recommend it. And um, have fun with this. It's really useful. Well worth the money. Thanks for tuning in. We'll see you next time.